Hey everybody, it's Emily from ARG Schooling and today I want to talk about how to choose the best books to use in your homeschool. So when you decide to school with living books and use or create a literature based program, the most difficult aspect of that is deciding what books to use. There's just there's a lot of books. How do you know what books to use? So I'm going to explain to you today kind of a little bit about how I go about choosing books. And maybe I can impart some advice to you about that. We'll see where this goes. So um, <clears throat> one of the first things I do is I figure out what am I going to be studying with my child. I knew we were going to be studying ancients this year for first grade and I knew I wanted to study nature study as our science. What did I do? I researched the crap out of books basically. I, re I spend hours of time researching books. Like that is my hobby basically. What do you do for fun? I research books and then I read them. Um, I love to, to find new books and so when I knew we were going to study ancient Egypt I scoured Google and Goodreads and Amazon for the best recommendations out there. And then I got a lot of books and I read them and I chose which one we were going to use. And oftentimes I will read or research like 10 different books just to choose one. I spent a lot of time and we ended up going with Egyptian Diary because I thought for her age level, for a first grader, or for a five to seven year old, we'll say, since I don't really, it's not really grade one per se, as much as five to seven ish. And for that age range, I thought this book was probably the best I could find. There are several books on ancient Egypt, historical fiction type books, and you know, that's what I was looking for. There's lots of nonfiction, but this book was great because one, it focuses on a child and his day-to-day -day life as opposed to on a, he's on a dire mission or he had to he has to go through all these dire things and it's danger and and turmoil and his father died or his grand uh, it, it just there's so many in, in historical fiction there's so many books that are just dire and unsettling or frightening and yeah history was ugly sometimes and upsetting but for a first grader a five to seven year old you don't really need all of that and this book does have some danger elements I mean there's tomb robbers but it's not it's never a situation where you're like afraid the character will die I love Tommy De Paola's um, Bill and Pete books Bill and Pete and Bill and Pete go down the Nile these are adorable and they are it they take place in Egypt but in modern day Egypt and they talk about like especially in Bill and Pete go down the Nile they talk about the Sphinx and mummies and it's just they're adorable and funny and sweet and perfect for that age level there are books that I do use that do have that element of scariness but they do it in a way that it makes it a fun adventure and I, that would be the tales from the Odyssey series by Mary Pope Osborne and she is the author of the Magic Treehouse series so, and they're exciting and obviously they follow the story of the Odyssey which was is one of those stories that just never gets old it's an adventure and he meets all these dangers along the way and people do die but it's told in almost a comic book style I don't know if that's the right wording I want to use comic book style but in an, it's in an adventurous, fun way, as opposed to being too scary. And I mean, it depends on the child. My six-year-old can handle this. Some six-year-olds are a little more sensitive and might find it too frightening. You got to use your judgment there. So when it came to nature study, I had a few books that I knew that I wanted to cover. Cappy Boppy is probably one of my favorite, favorite, favorite picture books. I love this book so much. I first came across this when my oldest was about six or seven years old, I think. And we fell in love with Bill Pete. We, we have a lot of Bill Pete books. His books are just wonderful. And this is a true story about Bill Pete. So, I mean, 
How can you go wrong with a true story about a family who adopts a capybara? I mean, just look at him, he's so cute. And so, yeah, I mean, this was a definite. And I also knew that I wanted to include something from Jean Craighead George. All of her books have elements of nature study, and this one, in particular, I knew I wanted to use the tarantula in my purse and 172 other wild pets because this, again, true story about a family who has adopted many wild pets, from tarantulas to crows to chickadees and so forth. And it's just, these stories are wonderful, and they make you almost want to go out and adopt all those animals so you can experience nature firsthand. And I also knew that I wanted to use these because these books are gorgeous. I've seen these in my library many times over the years. We borrowed them and I finally went ahead and bought some of our own because, you know, if you're going to borrow them that many times, you may as well own it. So these books are awesome. Um, Donald Silver writes them and he gives you a square of an environment. And this one is backyard, but he's also got rainforest and desert and arctic tundra so like you can explore biomes that you can't explore from your home unless you happen to have a lot of money and can travel extensively but um but i love this one here and we also have pond and forest because or woods because we have a pond in our backyard we live in the woods and of course we have a backyard so we i love these books for nature study they are beautifully beautifully illustrated and then you can see the pictures are wonderful and there's tons of information in them. So these are great for studying nature with young children. So when I choose books, like I said, I, I research a lot. I go into great extensive detail. I spend a lot of time on Goodreads and researching on Google and looking up what are the best books for any particular topic. and. And then what do you do once you've gotten all of these books? You have, let's say you have 10 books on a topic. How do you narrow it down? Well, I always look for a book that is engaging. I want to be drawn into the story. So I choose books that I myself would, would want to read. And so I choose the books that are the most engaging. And then once I've chosen those, I narrow it down to content. Is this the right book for that age level? The Golden Goblet is a fascinating story, but way too, too much for a six-year-old. But I knew this book was fantastic, and I knew that I wanted to use it somewhere, at some point. So we actually have read this this year with my eighth graders, because we are studying the history of science, which is like an overall study of world history through the lens of science. And we're using the Joy Hakeem um, story of science books as our spine and so I knew this book would fit perfectly there it, so what kinds of books do I look for if I'm studying a history of science for example I want to look for books that take an angle of science bomb which tells the the story of the race to build and steal the world's most dangerous weapon it's all about the building of the atomic bomb totally fascinating story but it covers both history and science because you get the historical aspect of this is what was happening during World War II and you get the science aspect because this is about scientists who were working together in secret to build the atomic bomb and keep it from the Germans basically and there's just it's incredibly well written this is such an engaging book you almost feel like you're reading a novel it doesn't even feel like nonfiction and it's just really 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 well done and I highly recommend this to anyone who is interested in this topic it's not even just for children I found this super engaging and I learned a lot that I didn't know and I've read a lot about World War II but not specifically this topic so I found it really well done and I also included books that were historical fiction like The True Adventures of Charlie Darwin which is a historical fiction take on his childhood and early years and up until he goes on his voyage around the world and again really well written I love Carolyn Meyers books and so when I saw that she had a book on Charles Darwin I'm like that fits in history of science 
boom, perfect. I didn't even really have to think this one through besides I read it. I mean, obviously I'm gonna read it, but it's very well done. I look for books overall that A, I'm going to wanna read, that I'm gonna enjoy, and, and that I will be engaged and fascinated by. I choose books that I think will fit my children's age level. I choose books that I think will make my kids want to read them, um, that will engage them specifically. And, you know, sometimes that means a book that might almost be twaddle, but not quite. Um, and yeah, you just, I choose books that I think will make my children love reading. I'm not too, too strict about twaddle. I don't mind it as long as I don't have to read it out loud, because I just, like, I can't. I can't do books that are like cartoons made into a book. I can't do books that are like really stilted with the language. It just makes it hard for me to read. Um, but I don't like ban them. My kids can read them if they want to, but I'm just not going to read them out loud because I have better things to read. I have better books to choose from if I'm going to be reading them out loud. So yeah, I mean, I choose the best that I can to present to my children educationally, but they're allowed to choose whatever they want to read in their free time. So, you know, my daughter, who is 16, she reads a lot of, like, manga, graphic novel type stuff, and that's fine. I just don't want to read it out loud to anybody, which I wouldn't need to. But, um, but yeah, so I try to find books that are engaging, are beautifully written, are pertinent to what we're studying, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I do. <laughs> and it's how I spend most of my time. So I hope you got something out of this video. Please let me know in the comments, what, what do you do? How do you choose books? Um, what are your rules? Thanks for watching. And please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time. Happy reading!